Thank you for having me here today. Again, my name is Yolanda Rondon. I'm a civil rights attorney with the American Arab Anti-Discrimination Committee. And we focus on the populations of Arab Americans, but we also work in the larger community of the Masa communities, which include Muslim, Arab, Sikh, and South Asian, understanding the impact and the targeting of these communities based on the perception that these communities are Muslim. And this has played out not only in the media, but of course in the political rhetoric going forward. So ADC was founded in 1980 by U.S. Senator James Asbarek, and we were dedicated to defend the civil rights of all persons, but particularly understanding and embracing our Arab cultural heritage, as well as addressing stereotypes. And these stereotypes have largely and greatly been played out even in the education system. And so Post 9-11, a community that was once invisible became visible again, not only through cultural garb worn or um, religious garb, but the aspects of how they looked in general. Prior to that, many Arab Americans were perceived to be white. And for decades, ADC has worked to um, address that stereotype, but also to understand that we are not and should not be classified um, as white, not only because of the treatment, but because it ignores the essence and identity of who Arab Americans are. Of course, with the... Um, past election of the current administration. Um, our community uh, went from invisible to visible to highly visible, right? Uh, we could not be ignored, um, particularly. Um, and so with that, for the last um, 10 years, ADC has taken on the initiative to make sure that we also had a presence in that education system, um, based on the fact that our communities, we are essentially teaching the next generation to embrace these same stereotypes through lesson plans, um, media, and videos that are shown in our schools. One example is Aladdin. Um, there are several um, um, you know um, songs and stereotypes that are played out in that film prior to ADC um, the legal team getting involved 10 years ago and getting those changes done by Disney so in the former version there was a line stating yes we're barbaric and this is our home right and these were these common stereotypes um, that were pushed to show our Americans as criminals or as mischievous and as um, blatantly ugly, and these are not the same stereotypes, you know, they've essentially been recycled, right, to portray minority groups, whether you're black or Hispanic, as uncivilized, right, and as a community we have to watch, and as um, a group of people that we have to keep under control. And so when we mention Aladdin and things that occurred 10 years ago, it's not to um, dissipate the actual events that are happening now, but building that framework that it has been built into our education system, um, particularly with the teaching of issues in the Middle East, um, issues regarding controversial decisions in Israel and Palestine. It is built into these curriculum and these textbooks about those perceptions. And we've seen this played out recently. Um, for instance, the Coachella Valley High School had a mascot called the Arabs. And the mascot would come out um, with a, a character with a crooked nose. And during the basketball games, a woman would come out um, dressed like a genie, you know, on top of a, a mat with a lamp. Um, and the, 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 the concept, there was no Arabs who lived in that area, who went to that school. And um, their basis was that they were trying to pay homage to the historical area of the Coachella Valley um, that, that once housed a large number of Arabs. But not understanding the context of that framing where the Arabs were brought over there as basically endangered servants to uh, mine the date farms. So you just excluded the historical exploitation of a group of people. And I don't think it was done out of malice. It was just basically done out of misunderstanding and, you know, you know, just trying to, you know, kind of ignore the historical aspects. 
And so as a civil rights attorney with the American Arab Anti-Discrimination Committee, I mostly get involved when we get education discrimination complaints. And while it's not a good thing, um, these education discrimination complaints open the window for us to actually bridge those issues with those schools. So for instance, after that the situation with Coachella Valley, you know, now we have actually Arabic lessons and teaching plans in that school. They've changed their, their mascot. Um, they are a poor district, so we was able to help them raise funds to change all the, um, the um, characters and the mascots from their uniforms and the gyms and things of that nature. But also going forward, um, we've also created a study abroad transition program, um, helping them doing that, um, as well as incorporating Arabic into the lesson plans. So particularly when we teach about geometry and algebra, we could teach about the uh, Arabic origins of that. Um, also when we look at um, other contributions of the Arab culture, we also teach students now how to actually speak and write their name in Arabic um, and going forward. And so a lot of these situations that once started off negatively, we now continue to work with these schools. So another district we work with is the Frisco Independent School District in Texas, um, as well as um, the New York City Public Schools District um, that had issues regarding 9-11 um, and the aftermath of that in those schools. So the primary three challenges um, facing our American students is, of course, bullying. Um, second, of course, is profiling. Um, not always done intentionally, um, done in the, in the name of safety, but it's being pushed upon by local police departments, um, even by our federal government. And primarily, this has been done through the mechanism of the counter-violent extremism programs. Um, one tool. Um, that has been used under these programs, which we call CVE for short, is the Don't Be a Puppet program. And this Don't Be a Puppet program um, is built upon this essential same don't do drugs campaign, which largely failed in, in the black and Hispanic communities. And it's built upon that same notion that there are preconceived factors for you to become a terrorist, right? And one of those factors is that you're Muslim. Um, and so pushing this aspect to make teachers um, essentially extensions of law enforcement because the Don't Be a Puppet program is a website that, sh if it's shown in schools, tells teachers to monitor their students, to look for certain behaviors, someone speaking a suspicious language, someone who's traveling to suspicious places, um, someone who is not assimilated. Um, and so it, it puts this burden on teachers who, for one, um, have enough work to do, um, <laughs> but two, um, are essentially not creating that safe space that they should be tasked with creating. Um, and so we've um, been working on the CVE front in that regard. We have gotten a number of districts to, um, to um, um, prohibit the inclusion of that in their schools. Um, largely working with AFT as well and CVE. Um, there were 200 um, educators and unions who have come out against the CVE programs and use in schools. Um, but also are advocately advancing for better school, school climate um, changes that um, institutions can make, um, as well as creating safe spaces. So uh, a number of the other issues that I, I touched upon briefly was the bullying aspect. And so I'm just going to discuss briefly, um, anecdotally, of course, because I'm a lawyer and um, I don't want to get my client in trouble, but um, three cases and examples of what we're seeing now um, in the, in the post-Trump administration election um, and just overall the political rhetoric um, as our communities become largely and more increasing diverse with the incoming um, Syrian and Iraqi and Yemeni refugees. So the primary issue is um, one, a lack of education. Specifically, um, there were three incidents where schools refused to register refugees and asylees um, for school. And, and this has long been settled that they have the right to education, all persons, regardless of their status. The last, an, another example is um, stereotypes being used um, and the treatment of women. So there was a, a school district in West Virginia that was 
trying to do the right thing and teach about Islam, um, but in their lesson plan, ask the question, well, what does the Quran teach you about the, the, the negative treatment of women in the Middle East? Right, the whole framing of that conversation was wrong. But secondly, this was being taught in a fourth grade class, and the, and we the only reason why we found out is because the parent of the child saw the homework assignment and called us and said, "What's going on? You know, my my child doesn't want to go to that class anymore, and is scared." Um, other comments on issues also involve disciplinary issues, um, and so as as children. Um, you know, sometimes they don't say nice words to each other. Um, and there was a, a altercation that had occurred where an Arab student was called a terrorist. Um, and this, the student um, did, um, you know, lash out and, and say um, derogatory terms back. But the Arab student was the only student disciplined in this regard, who was suspended for a whole week. Um, and so it, it was perpetuating that criminalization of Arab students as the troublemakers, as the, the students that um, are at fault for everything because of their identity alone. Um, and so with that, um, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> There's a, a range of issues um, that continue to occur um, along with schools automatically um, reporting um, children. Um, to law enforcement, which is a big issue. Um, there needs to be procedures and strengthened procedures, and, and teachers can get involved um, for protection of privacy issues. Um, students who are um, Arab or Muslim and seen withdrawn are automatically, they call the police right away, um, and, and there's an issue with that, um, as well as there was um, a, a movie shown regarding American Sniper in a classroom. Um, and after that movie was shown, it was, um, it was the, the word ISIS was repeated throughout the school, the large elementary school. And so as a result, a six year old repeated the word ISIS in a nursing, in the nurse's office. And the FBI showed up at the mother's house the next day where the six year old was interrogated for seven hours. The six-year-old was deemed not to be a threat, but the fact that the principal alone, without an investigation, decided to go to the FBI is, is crucial. Um, and, and this plays a role because often the student resource officers in schools are law enforcement. And so in their mind, they're doing the right thing. So there needs to be, you know, more, um, you know, of course, parent-teacher interaction and involvement um, in these matters going forward. Um, understanding um, the aspects of disciplinary issues and discrepancies between those, and um, just making sure that they work with actual civil rights um, communities and groups. We work largely with the Leadership Conference of Civil Human Rights, where we're an executive board member. Um, and also, sorry, I, I know I'm running a long time. One thing I want to also mention is also um, understanding that with the large influx of um, Arab um, refugees and new incoming immigrants that um, there's a stereotype that Arabs are wealthy, right? And our students are, you know, they're just the top of the top. We have our fair share, like everybody else. Um, and so with that stereotype, they go largely underserved. And so the, the teachers don't bother them. Um, but also addressing that stereotype of just automatically placing them um, in ESL classes without appropriate materials and culturally sensitive ones. A lot of resources, of course, myself being Afro-Hispanic, are given to um, the Spanish population. But understand, it's a growing population, not only of um, Arabic students, but also South Asian students. And understand that we need to get those materials to them, too, um, so they also can excel and succeed in um, this world. Thank you.